Welcome to classes with Atish. In today's lesson, we will cover IUPAC nomenclature. This is going to be a longish lesson. A lot of rules are involved, so make sure you pay close attention. Let's start with some prerequisites. Okay. First thing is, got to remember that carbon has four valencies. Okay. So, always make sure that all the four valences are satisfied when we are looking at any compounds. Typically, hydrogen is the most associated uh, atom with carbon and it's often eliminated, means it's not represented in the diagrams. So, which means if you get something like this structure, it means there are hydrogen atoms here. So three hydrogen atoms plus this bond make the total as four and then two bonds. So there must be two hydrogen atoms too. Okay. So this would be the complete structure. Number two, there are different ways that organic compound structures are represented. First common way is the Lewis structure also called KQ less structure. This is very seldom used. So this is a full representation. So for example, in this one, this would be CH3, C2 hydrogen bonds here, and then oxygen and hydrogen. Okay. The second is what is called the condensed format. So that's exactly this. So CH3, CH2, OH, okay. And the last one is a line format. So in the line format, we only draw like this. So what that means is each of these start and end points are carbon atoms. The hydrogen is assumed. We don't specifically write that there are three hydrogens here and two hydrogens here. And at the end, we have a, in this example, a substituent like an alcohol. Okay. All right. Number three, we should remember is, is carbon chain names based on how many carbon atoms are there. So if it has one carbon atom, then the name will start with meth. Two carbon atoms, the name will start with eth. Three carbon atoms, prop. Four carbon atoms is bute. Five carbon atoms is pent. Six carbon atoms is hex, seven carbon atoms is hept, eight carbon atoms is oct, nine carbon atoms is non, ten carbon atoms is dec. We will limit ourselves to ten carbon atoms but you can go up to eleven, good to know is on deck and 12 is do deck and such okay but at the minimum remember up to 10 carbon atom chains what those organic compounds are called number four depending on the type of carbon carbon bonds the compound is named accordingly If it is a single bond between carbon atoms, then the base name of the structure is alkane. Okay. In this case, it's a fully saturated hydrocarbon, which means each carbon atom attaches itself to the highest number of hydrogen atoms that they can. Okay. Okay. 
if there is a double bond between carbon carbon atoms then the structure is called alkene okay and this is an unsaturated hydrocarbon which means it has two less hydrogen atoms that can attach to the carbon with a double bond um, than what can be attached to an alkene. Number three, if there is a triple bond between carbon-carbon atoms, then it's an alkyne. Okay, this is also an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Okay, number five, I will just introduce you to one substituent group, alkyl group. Alkyl group is formed when one hydrogen atom is missing from an alkane. For example, if the alkane is CH4, which is methane, if we remove one hydrogen atom, the alkyl group is CH3 and is represented like this. And this is methyl alkyl group. Okay. Similarly, if we have CH3, CH3, which is ethane, then CH3, CH2, with an open bond here, is ethyl alkyl group. Okay. Okay, so with the basics out of the way, let's start with the general rules for IUPAC nomenclature. The very first thing that we do is determine the base structure. We also call that the parent structure. The parent or core or base structure. Okay. To do this, First thing that we do is we find out the longest continuous carbon chain and once we find that out we number the chain in forward and backward manner. Okay, Let's take an example. Let's try to name one alkane. As we just talked about, an alkene is a hydrocarbon where all the bonds are single bonds. So let's say CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay. There is only one chain here, which is the longest obviously. So we don't need to worry about uh, A. Let's just number them. One, Two, three, four, and then we also number them backward. One, two, three, four. We'll quickly understand why we number them, but for this example, that numbering is not required, other than the fact that there are four carbon atoms. So, which means the name of this particular molecule would start with but. Okay. Now, since everything is a single bond, the rule here is we just add in uh, after but, so this becomes butane. Okay. Similarly, if we had another compound CH3, CH2, CH3, there are three carbon atoms, so the name will start with a prop. And since it's an alkane, how we name alkane is we add in to the end of the compound name. So this becomes propane. Okay, and such. So we figured how to name alkanes. Let's now move on to naming alkenes and alkynes. Okay. 
The concept is very simple. If there are double bonds, then it's an alkene. If there are triple bonds, then there is an alkyne. How we name alkenes is we add E and E to the end of the name. And how we name alkynes is we add Y and E to the end of the name. Let's take an example. Let's say CH2 double bond CH CH3. Okay. Like we said, let's first number them. One, two, three. And then we also reverse number them. One, two, three. Okay. There are three carbon atoms. So the name must start with prop. Okay. Now there is a double bond, which means it's an alkene. So the name should end with ene. Now notice I kept a space here. It's because we also need to determine what's the position of the double bond in the chain. That's the reason we did the numbering. Now if we consider the numbering scheme on the top, then the position is 1. So 1 in. If we consider the just say one in. If we consider the numbering scheme that is here, then the position is two. It could be written as prop two in. Right? But to remove that ambiguity, we have rule number two, which says the position of double bond, triple bonds, or even any substituent groups, we always take it as the smallest number. Okay? So in that case, prop 1 in is the correct answer. Prop 2 in is incorrect. Okay? That is the reason we do this numbering to figure out which would give the smallest number to the position of a double bond in this case or we will quickly learn about substituents next but uh, that's how we take that into consideration. Now prop 1 in can actually be written as prop in. The reason is this one doesn't really make sense we can just eliminate that it's not necessary to write it because However way you look at it, propene, the double bond, can only be at the first position. Okay? Let's take some more examples. Let's take this example, CH3, CH, double bond, CH, single bond, CH3. Okay? Just make sure that all the valencies of carbon atoms are satisfied. So 1, 2, 3 and hydrogen 4, this is good. 1, 2, 3 and hydrogen 4, this is good. Okay. Now how do we name this particular compound? So we number them first. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we number them in the reverse order. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, there are four carbon atoms, so the name must start with but. Okay? There is a double bond, so it's an butene. But like we mentioned, we need to mention the position of the double bond. Now, either way you look at it, if you take this numbering scheme or this numbering scheme, the a double bond occurs at position 2. So it is but 2 in is the correct name. Okay. Now why this numbering is important, just let's take another example, which would be another isotope of but2n. Let's say it is CH3, CH2, CH, double bond, CH2. Okay. So in this case, let's number that 1, 2, 
3, 4. And then reverse order 1, 2, 3, 4. There are four carbon atoms, so it must be a butte. There is a double bond, so it's a butene. But now if you take this numbering scheme, then it is but 4 in. But if you take this numbering scheme, it is but 1 in. Based on this rule, we always choose the smallest number, so it is but 1 in. And but 1 in and but 2 in are two separate compounds, so that's how we determine it. Okay? Let's also take an example with an alkyne. I will erase some of these and take an example of alkyne. Next, let's look at this compound now, CH3. C, triple bond, CH. Okay? So if we number this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3. There are three carbon atoms, so it has to be a prop. And the lowest number where the triple bond is positioned is 1, so prop 1. And since there's a triple bond, it's an ion. Prop 1 ion is the correct name of this particular compound. Okay? Next, let's talk about position of two types of substituents. The two substituents that we will consider right now are alkyl groups and halogen groups. Okay. So alkyl groups, like we mentioned, we gave some examples before. This is the methyl group. Then we could have an ethyl group and such, propyl, butyl and such, okay. Halogens are fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, okay. Both of these, we prefix the name of the alkyl group or the halogen group to the base name or base structure. Okay, let's take an example. Let's say we have this compound and here we have a methyl group. Okay, so let's go back to our First rule, determine the parent or base structure. So the longest continuous carbon chain. So it could be this way or this way, it's the same thing. So let's number that one, two, three, and four. And let's number that in the reverse order, one, two, three, and four, okay? This is hanging out here as a substituent, okay? So since it's a, Four carbon in the parent structure, it is a but. There are no double bonds, so it's a alkane, so it must be a butane. Now, how we name, name this one, the methyl group, is we prefix that. Okay, so this is methyl butane but then it's not complete because we need to indicate the position of this methyl group so that's where we look at rule number two so the position of the methyl group will have to take the numbering scheme where it gives the smallest number so if we take this numbering scheme the methyl group is at position two so this becomes two dash methyl butane all right let us take another example. So let's say we have a structure like this, CH3, CH2, CH, and then we have a chlorine in here, and then CH2, CH3. Okay, 
how do we name this compound? Again, we number that 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Reverse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, since there are 5 carbon atoms, it's a uh, pent. Since there are no double bonds, all single bonds, so it's uh, alkane, so it must end with a uh, ane. Okay. Now, where is the chlorine substituent hanging? It is at position 3. Both ways it's position 3. So, this is prefixed with a chloro and the position is 3 chloropentane. Okay. Just make sure that the number is followed by a dash and then the prefix and then there is no space between the prefix and the base name. So those are some standards that you should maintain. But if it's a chlorine, then it will be chloro. If it is fluorine, then it would be fluoro, bromo, iodo, things like that. Okay. So a couple of things to remember. Alkynes and halogens are always named as the prefix to the base name, okay? And uh, this is how the nomenclature would be uh, with the position clearly mentioned where this substituent is on the base structure. Okay, before I move on to the next set of rules, I just want to make one clarification. Remember we determined the nomenclature of but, one, in, and similarly, we also did but, two, in. The correct way of naming these, this is also correct, but a more better way of naming this is one comes in the front and you write butene. Okay. Similarly, this one, 2 comes in the front and you write butene, okay? This is not wrong, but this is more correct. Let's put it that way. So, so far we have seen some simple rules how to name alkene, alkenes and alkynes. And also we have considered two separate groups of substituents. One is the alkyl group and the other one is the halogen group, okay? Now, before we move on to other functional groups, and most likely I will do that in a separate video, let's just do some deep dive into some other rules and uh, see when and how to apply those. If the same substituent or a double or triple bond occurs more than once in the base structure, then we indicate that by using prefixes like di, tri, tetra, etc. Okay. Let's take an example on this one. So let's look at the case of substituent first and then we will look at double and triple bonds because there's a little bit difference between how we treat both of these. So let's say we have a carbon chain where we have CH3, CH, CH3. Let's say we have CH2 here, CH, then again we have another CH3, CH2, CH3. Okay. First thing is determine the longest continuous carbon chain. So obvious, we can see that this is the longest continuous carbon chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And reverse order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Now, the methyl groups actually occur if we look at this numbering screen. They are correct 2 and 4. Let's just write that down here. And if we look at this numbering scheme, then they are correct 3 and 5. 
which combination do you think is the smallest? It's obvious that this is the one. So we will use the numbering scheme on the top. Okay. Now there are six carbon atoms in the main chain. So this is a hex. This is an alkane because all are single bonds. So this is a hexane. Okay. Now there are two methyl groups. So if the same substitute occurs more than once, then we will have to use dimethyl. Okay. But that's not complete. We have to also indicate the position of both these methyl groups. What are the positions? 2 and 4. So how we write it is 2 comma 4 dash dimethylhexane. Again, just remember there is no space between dimethyl and hexane. It's one word. Okay. Let us now look at a case when we have multiple double or triple bonds in the base structure. Let's take an example. Let's say CH3, CH, double bond, CH, single bond, CH, double bond, CH, CH3. Okay. So this one, let's number it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Now, where does the double bond occur? In this case, it occurs at 2 and 4. And in this numbering scheme, it occurs at 2 and 4. So it's actually symmetric, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So since there are 6 carbon atoms in the main chain, it will be uh, starting with a hex. Now, if there are 2 double bonds, then instead of just doing diene, we write it as adiene. Okay. But we also need to represent the position of both these double bonds so that we prefix as 2 comma 4 hexadiene. Okay. If there were three double bonds, then it would be a triene. Okay. And like that. If there were four double bonds, then it will be a tetraene. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, it's not hexdiene, it's hexadiene. So just remember that. That's the difference between how we name the substituents versus how we name the double bonds. Similarly, if we had a triple bond, let's take a simple example now, CH3, C, triple bond, C, let's say we have another triple bond here, CH2, CH3, okay. Let's number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In this scheme, the triple bonds occur at two and four. In this numbering scheme, the triple bonds occur at three and five. So this is the correct choice. Now since there are seven carbon atoms on the uh, base structure, it is, we'll start with an hept, okay? And this one will become a di y n, okay? And the position
position will be 2 comma 4 heptadiene I don't know how to pronounce it differently than that but it is heptadiene okay so if there were three triple bronze then it would be A tri Y and E if there were four triple bonds then it would be A tetra Y and E okay so that is how we name when we have multiple double bonds and triple bonds on the same B structure so before I write down the next rule let's first try and name one uh, new compound Let's say the structure is like this, CH3, CH2, CH, and then we have a methyl group here, and then we have CH. Let's say there is a ethyl group here, CH2, CH3, and then we have CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay? Now let's see what's the longest carbon chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If we look at this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we look this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is obviously the longest carbon chain. Let's number it now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Always number in the reverse order 2. Makes life simpler. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, five six seven in this numbering scheme where do these um, alkyl groups lie they lie at three and four in this numbering scheme where do they lie they lie at four and five so which one is our obvious choice we'll have to go with the smallest numbers so this is our correct numbering scheme okay now that we know that so there are seven carbon atoms in the base structure. So this is a hept and this is an alkane. So this is an heptane. Now we need to mention the position and the name of each of the substituent alkyl groups. So we have a methyl, we have an ethyl. So if we have two different substituent groups, then we name them alphabetically. Since ethyl comes first, we will write 4 ethyl because E comes first alphabetically, and then we will write 3 methyl heptane. Making sense? So 4 ethyl dash 3 methyl heptane. Okay. So the rule then is if different substituents occur on the base structure then put them in alphabetic order okay let's take one more example because I want to um, illustrate one particular case when there could be some confusion so let's say we have um, CH3 CH and we have CH3, let's say we have another CH2, CH3 here. Let's say, let's remove this hydrogen. Let's say we have another methyl here, and then we have CH3. Okay? In this case, what's the longest chain? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
one, two, so this, this or this is basically the same. There is one issue here though, this could be the longest chain, 4 carbon and this could be also the longest chain, 4 carbon. So there is another rule to determine which uh, chain to take as the base chain. Well, just take it from me that this will be the longest and I will illustrate later on what rule determines this as the base chain and not this, okay? And let's just assume this is the base chain. So let's number it now. One, two, three, four. Number it in the reverse order. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now where do our methyl group and ethyl groups lie? In this numbering scheme, they lie at two, two, and three. Two, two, and three. Okay. And in this order we see that the ethyl is at 2 but the methyls are at 3 each. So obviously this is the choice of the smallest number so we'll go with that. Now how do we name this? So this is a butane because there are four carbon atoms and this is an alkane Okay, now we have two methyls, so it is a dimethyl and then there is an ethyl. So we use rule number three to determine its dimethyl, but when we use rule number four, now there is methyl and ethyl, two different substituents in there. So it says we put them in alphabetic order. Now we don't consider that D in the dimethyl part of the alphabetic order. We just consider methyl the base uh, alkyl uh, group name, okay? So still ethyl will come first. So which means this will be 3-ethyl-2,2. I don't have enough space here. Let me fix this. Dimethyl butane. So three ethyl, two two dimethyl butane. Okay. So what I'm illustrating here is. When we do the alphabetic order, we just consider the E of ethyl and M of methyl, not the D of dimethyl. Okay? Now, with this example, let's look at why this is the correct base chain and not this guy. Okay? So just remember this example or I will just keep it here, uh, remove some of the text in here and then we'll write down some additional rules to determine the base structure. Okay. Okay. Rule number five, this I call the rule of branches. Okay. It's a very important rule. Many times students miss this one. So what this says is, if there are two choices of the parent chain, two or more, which means they have all equal lengths, right? So we saw that here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, both had equal lengths. Then how do we determine which one is the correct con uh, longest continuous chain, okay? What we do is we choose the chain that has the larger number of branches or chain with the greatest number of side chain. Okay? Let's see. 
Okay, let's look at this one. So on this one, one, two, three, four. So this chain, how many branches are there? There is one branch, there is two branch, there is three branch. So this one has three side chains. Okay. On this one, one, two, three, four, how many uh, side chains are there? I can see there is only one side chain because this total is one group. So this one has only one side chain. So the chain which has the greatest number of side chains, that becomes the parent chain. So this is the correct option for the parent chain. Okay. Still, sometimes there could be situations where, you know, the structure is such that two choices have equal number of side chains even. Okay. In that case, what do we do? So then another rule comes in here. Chain whose substituents have the lowest numbers. Okay, so we will number both those chains and see which chain has substituents with the lowest numbers. So that's the correct chain. Okay, still there might be some ambiguity. Then a third rule applies. Chain having the greatest number of carbon atoms in the smaller side chain. Okay, you can see it's getting pretty complicated, but hopefully you don't get into these situations. Most common situations would be A and B. There could be ambiguity even after C. Then the final way to determine the correct parent chain is chain having least branched side chain. Okay, this might get a little bit too much for an introductory uh, lesson like this but I will make a note and provide you some examples of C and D and maybe also B and see when to apply these. Okay next up is another special scenario and it relates to cyclic hydrocarbons. So let's say a simple cyclic hydrocarbon is CH2, CH2, CH2 and like this okay so this has three carbon atoms and all single bonds this is prop in but since it is cyclic all we do is we prefix with cyclopropane okay so rule number six for cyclic base structures, follow all the rules as before, but prefix with cyclo. Okay. Before I proceed to the next part of this lesson, I do want to dedicate this video to one of my high school teachers, Ms. Saraswati Raman. She was our chemistry teacher and I really want to thank her because of the way she taught us. I truly believe that I have a love for chemistry, which is very weird, but I still love chemistry and I do read a lot, uh, although it has no direct bearing with anything that I do in my profession, but that goes to show how well we have been taught and I truly want to thank Mr. Raman for the same. Let us do some deep dive with alkanes and alkynes. I will name this part of the lesson alkene and alkyne deep types. Okay. 
let's say rule number one the parent chain is numbered in such a way that the double and triple bonds have the lowest numbers let's look at an example series 3 CH CH CH2 CH2 CH3 okay now if we number this one two three four five six reverse one two three four five six so in this scheme the double bond has number two in this scheme the double bond is number four so the parent chain is number so that the double bond has a lower number, so this is the correct option. Correct way of numbering the parent chain. Let's take another example. CH3, CH, double bond, CH, CH2, CH. Let's say we have a, a bromine here and CH3. Okay. Let's number that again. One, two, Three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, the contention here is for the double bond is at position two, but bromine is at position five. Okay. This guy, double bond is at position 4, but bromine is at position 2. So which one is the correct numbering scheme? Okay, remember one thing, double bonds and triple bonds have higher uh, priority over the halogens. We'll talk more about priority in a later lesson, but between these two, double bond and triple bond have higher priority. So which means this would be the right option, okay, not this. Okay, rule number two, if both double and triple bonds are present in the same base structure lower numbers are given to the multiple bonds even though sometimes we might end up with a lower number for yene than ene Okay. Further, when there is a choice in numbering, which means a double bond and a triple bond are located at equivalent distances, then the preference is given to the double bond. So I'll just write that double bond gets preference of lower number when this and this are at equivalent distance okay a lot of meaty words let's take an example and this will be clear ch3 ch double bond CH, single bond C, triple bond 
C H. Okay, let's number this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. In this case, the double bond is at position two and the triple bond is at position 4. In this case, the double bond is at position 3 and the triple bond is at position 1. Okay, so you can see that this choice gives me lower numbers for double bond and triple bond compared to this choice. Okay, so the name of this compound will be pent because there are five carbon atoms then okay before we do that let's write down a third rule when both double bond and triple bond are present the n suffix follows the parent name parent name directly and y n e suffix follows N okay just remember here the this is N and not E N E what does that mean the N suffix will follow the parent name directly so pent 10 no E the location of the double bond is at 3, so 3 pen 10. And then what's the location of the triple bond is 1 y in. This is how it should be named. Okay. So number 1, this rule states how you number it. So you get the lower numbers for the multiple bonds. Okay. And this rule states how you actually name it. So recall here it is not E N E, it is only E N, which will follow the base name, and then Y N E will follow it with the numbering scheme here. So this determines, let's write that down. This determines position of triple bond. And this determines position of double bond. Okay, rule number four. For a branched unsaturated hydrocarbon, select the longest possible carbon chain. that includes the highest number of unsaturated carbons. So if we recall, we define unsaturated carbon atoms as the carbon atoms which has a double bond or a triple bond. So in essence, this means we select the longest possible carbon chain, including the most number of double and triple bonds. Let's say we have CH3, CH2, C, let's say we have a double bond here, CH2, CH2, and CH3. Okay, 
just by looking at it the longest continuous carbon chain is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay but that longest carbon chain does not include this unsaturated carbon right this particular rule overrides the longest continuous carbon chain rule which means now this particular sequence 1 2 3 4 5 6 although this is smaller than a longest carbon chain of 7 this is the correct base structure because this includes the highest number of unsaturated carbons okay so how we name this is this is a hex and we have a double bond so it's an alkene so E and E um, the alkene position is at position 1 so 1 hexene but we have a ethyl group at position 2 so 2 ethyl 1 hexene we can probably get rid of this one so we can also write this as 2 ethyl hexene okay so what we need to remember here is we need to include the highest number of unsaturated carbon atoms in this case the unsaturated carbons was this one and this one so only this chain includes both the unsaturated carbon atoms and not this chain okay then the last one this is again a little advanced if there is a choice in numbering not covered in one through four in one Four, the parent chain is numbered is numbered to give the substituents the lowest number at the first point of difference again <laughs> a lot of words in here but this example I will give later on. This would be beyond the scope of uh, this introductory lesson. But I will definitely provide an example on this one in a later advanced lesson. Okay. Another quick word about cyclic hydrocarbons. Let's take an example. Let's say we have a cyclic hydrocarbon like this. And there is a double bond here. Okay. So this is the line representation which means every corner has a carbon and then this, this is a double bond, everything else is a single bond. And let's say we have a methyl group here, okay. So how do we number this, right. So in this case, we number such that the substituent has the least number and whether we should number it this way 1 2 3 4 5 or 1 2 3 4 5 that is determined by the lowest number that the double bond gets so obviously if we go this way 1 2 3 4 5 then the double bond gets the lowest number right so the nomenclature on this one will be methyl this is cyclopentene because we have a double bond and what's the location of the double bond it's two cyclopentene okay so just remember that rule as well okay now is the time to go over several examples and uh, really apply whatever we learned so far okay so the first one we'll go over is okay 
Okay, so let's try to number this one first. We will number this one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the longest chain. Number it in the reverse order. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we consider the top numbering, then the methyl appears at 2 and the ethyl appears at 4. Okay, if we consider this numbering, then the methyl appears at 5 and the ethyl appears at 3. So, obviously, this one is the correct choice because that's the set of smaller numbers. So this, now it's uh, six carbon atoms, all single bonds. So this is hexane, okay. Now at position two, we have methyl. At position four, we have ethyl. But ethyl alphabetically comes first. So this will be four dash ethyl. 2-methyl hexane. Okay, next example, let's look at CH3, CH2, CH, we have a methyl group here, then we have another CH, we have an ethyl SCO2 group here, CH3, then we have another methyl group here, then we have another methyl group here, and CH3. Okay, let's try, try to name this one. So, the longest chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Also this way 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's write those down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And also we could write it down as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. Now, which would be the parent chain? Now, remember one rule. If there are two competing parent chains, then the chain which has the largest number of side chains is the parent chain. So, the first chain has one side chain, two side chain, three side chain, and four side chains, right? So, this one has four side chains, okay? Now, if we go this way, we have this is one side chain, two side chain and three side chain. So, this one has three side chains. So, obviously, this is not the right choice of the parent chain. This would be the right choice. Okay. Now, if we have established that that's the right choice, Let's also number it in the reverse order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. On the top one, we have methyl at 3, 5 and 6. We have methyl. And we have this propyl at 4. Okay. In the bottom numbering, we have methyl at 2, 3 and 5 and we have propyl at 4. So obviously looking at this, this is the correct numbering. So we should go with the bottom numbering. Okay. Now 7 carbon atoms and all single bonds. So it is a hep. It's an alkane. Okay. Now we have 235 methyl and 4 propyl. Which comes first alphabetically? M or P? M comes first. So it will be 2, 3, 5 trimethyl. Four propyl heptane. 
Now let's look at another example involving double bonds and triple bonds existing together. So let's say CH triple bond C CH2 CH double bond CH2. Okay. Now let's look at what the nomenclature for this one will be. Let's number this first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So on the top one, triple bond appears at 1. And double bond appears at 4. Okay. In the bottom numbering scheme, triple bond appears at 4. And the double bond appears at 1. So you can see this is the case of equivalent distance, which is double bond and triple bond both are at equivalent distances. In that case, double bond gets the preference. So, this one would be the right numbering scheme. Okay. Now we have five carbon atoms. So, the name will be pent. Now, the position of the double bond comes in the front. So, one pent 10. Remember that we are not including that extra E. Okay. Dash. The position of the double bond, a triple bond is 4. Wine. Okay. Okay. Let's look at this example. CH3, C, C, double bond here, CH2. CH2, CH, double bond, CH2. Okay. Now remember that rule that Regardless of the length of the chain, we must include um, the longest continuous carbon chain including most number of unsaturated carbons. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 unsaturated carbons. So we must have this on the chain. So let's number this now. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Reverse 1, 2, 3, 4 and let's write this on the top 5 okay now the top scheme numbering scheme we have double bond at 1 and 5 1 and 5 in the bottom numbering scheme we have the double bond at 1 and 4. Right? Let's uh, relook at it to 1 and actually this is sorry, this is 4. 1 and 4 and this way also 1 and 4. So it doesn't matter both either we can choose either one. So anyway, so the name would be pent and this is a pent in, right? Where, okay, no, I made a mistake here. This should be pentadiene. Let me raise this one. Pentadiene. What are the positions of the double bonds? 1, 4 pentadiene. And we have a methyl group. Okay, so yeah, so th that's another thing that we need to consider. If we look at this, the methyl group at, is at number 4. But if, I, if we look at the top numbering scheme, the methyl group is at number 2. Alright, so this one must be the right um, choice. So this should be 2 methyl. dash 1 4 pentadiene so so far we have gone over double bonds triple bonds the alkyne groups the halogen groups okay 
Next, we will look at other functional groups. So the first functional group that I will introduce to you is alcohols. Okay. Alcohols, they end with OH. Okay. The suffix that goes in the nomenclature is all. Okay. How we put the suffix is if it is an alkane, the suffix is in. If it is an alkene, the suffix is in. And if it is an alkyne, the suffix is in. We all know this. How we add this all suffix behind these is we cut out the e's and we add all. Okay, I'll go over some examples if we make it clear. Also, if there are multiple OH groups on the parent chain, then also remember to add di, tri, tetra in front of the alls. Okay, so when we add the di, tri, tetra, all those things, just taking that example of alkane, it will be. So we will include this E in this case, di all. Okay. Similarly, if we, if we have three OH groups, then it will be in tri all. Okay. So remember to include the E at that time. Do not eliminate the E. Okay. All right. The next thing about this one is there is a priority. So alcohols have more priority than the alkyl groups, the halogen groups, and the double bonds. Okay? So what I mean by priority means when we number the lowest number goes to OH. Okay? Let's take some examples. We have CH3, CHOH here, CH, we have CH3, CH2, CH3. Okay. Now, see, we said alcohols have more priority, so they must get the lowest number. So, obviously, the main chain is this we should not number it this way that way OH will have greater number than this methyl group so the correct form of numbering will be 1 2 3 4 5 okay this is a pentane so let's write that first okay now alcohol is at position 2 Right, so it will be two pentane. We delete the E and we replace that with all. Okay, we delete the E and we replace that with all. So two pentanol, but that's not everything. We also have the three methyl dash two pentanol. Now let's take an example where we have two OH groups. So let's say we have something like this, CH3, okay? Now numbering wise it would be one, two, three, four. It's symmetric so we don't need to number in the reverse order. This is butane diol, okay? So the positions are two and three. Butane. Remember when we do diol, we include the E. 
die all. Okay? Be very careful about the spellings here. In a hurry, you might write butan diol. That will be incorrect. Do it with the E in this case. Alright, let's take another cyclic compound example. So let's say we have this. There is a double bond here and the OH is here. Okay. Now how we number this? The lowest number goes to the substituent and we make sure we number in a way so that the double bond gets the low numbers as well. So obviously we will not go this way, we will go this way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is a cyclopentene. Right? So this will be the double bond position is at 2, 2, Cyclo pen teen will not write the E. Now we need to let them know what's the position of the all. So it will be one all. Two cyclo pen ten, one all. Okay. Alright. Let's move on to the next functional group. Okay, the next one we will look at is ethers. How do ethers look? We'll have an alkyl group, then O and another alkyl group. Okay. So for ethers we only have common names. Okay. These two alkyl groups R and R dash. These alkyl groups are put in alphabetic order. Okay, and the ethers end with ether. Okay, let's take some examples. Let's say we have CH3, CH2. O, CH2, CH3. So both are ethyl alkyl groups. So we will write this as diethyl ether. If we have something like this, CH3, O, CH2, CH3. So one alkyl group is methyl, the other alkyl group is ethyl. In alphabetic order it will be ethyl, methyl, ether. Okay, it's as simple as that. Okay, the next set of functional groups, I'll call them together. They are called the carbonyl group. carbonyl groups. How the carbonyl groups are structured is this R C double bond O R dashed. Okay. Now depending on what so R is an alkyl group and R dashed could be another alkyl group or a hydrogen or something else okay so depending on what R dash is there are different names to each of the carbonyl group when R dash is a hydrogen atom so when it is like this then this is called an aldehyde okay when R dash is another uh, alkyl group, let's just represent it as this, then it's a ketone. Okay, and when the R dash is uh, OH, then it's a 
carboxylic acid. Okay. Now, nomenclature of all these three follow similar pattern. So I plug them together. So all of these, the name will go in the suffix. Okay. So what is the suffix for each of these? For aldehyde, it's al. For ketone, it's on. And for carboxylic acid, it's oic acid. Okay. So for example, if this R is an alkane, then this will become A N E. We remove the E. This. Okay. So propanol, butanol, or ethanol, things like that. This one. Let's say if it is an alkane, then it will be A N O N E. So methanol, ethanol, propanol, and such. This one will be A N O E C acid. So ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, and such. Okay. okay, so similarly, if it was uh, alkene, then it will be NR, N on, N oic acid, and for alkynes, it will be YN AL, YN ONE, and YN. Acid. We will go over some examples, it will make it clear. Alright, now if we have multiple aldehyde groups, multiple ketone groups, and multiple carboxylic groups on the parent gene, so let's say multiple um, functional groups. So if we have two aldehyde groups, then how will that be named? It will end in A, N, E is included, alkane, dial, or E, N, E for alkene, dial, or Y, N, E for alkyne, dial. Okay? We cannot have more than two aldehyde groups on the same uh, parent chain. Okay? Alright. Numbering wise, the C of the aldehyde group is included. So let's see this. I'll just mention because this applies to all of them. C is included in the chain in the parent chain. And is given number one. Okay. When we take some examples, you will see how that works out. The other thing about numbering is, when we give the numbering the priority, if there are other uh, functional groups, or let's say other double bond, things like that, um, present on the parent chain, then the priority is always like this. So the carbonyl group, has greater priority than alkyl groups or halogen groups or the double bonds.
which means what? The carbonyl group will have the lowest number. Okay, just for completion sake, let's also write what would be uh, if there are multiple functional groups for ketones, what would be the suffix? So it will be N A N E dione. Okay, or if it is an alkene, E N E dione. Y N E dione and such. We could have more than two ketone groups in a parent chain. So then we'll have A N E trione, E N E trione, Y N E trione and such. Okay. For carboxylic acid again the maximum number that can be is two. So this will be A N E oic sorry so this would be a n e di oic acid e n e di oic acid y n e di oic acid all right now let's look at some examples let's take example of an aldehyde first CH3, CH2, CHO. Okay, that's what it means. Let's number it. So the aldehyde carbon always gets number 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this is, this is prop. Now, no double bonds here. This double bond is for the aldehyde group. Okay, there's no double bond between the carbons. So it is propane now we don't write the e we replace it with al for aldehyde so this is propanol okay now next example okay and then we have one like this all right let's number this first so the carbon of the aldehyde group always gets the number one two three four so there are four carbons in the chain so the name must be but okay now there are no double bonds here so it is butane we don't write the e we replace it with al we and this is number one, so we don't need to specify one L. But then we also have a methyl group at three. So this would be three methyl butanol. Let's take another example. And also we have a double bond here. Okay, how about this one? Okay, let's also add a methyl group here. Okay. The carbon of the aldehyde group always gets the number 1, number 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So since there are 4 carbon atoms, it is but. Now there is a double bond here. So this is butene, alkene. This goes as butenal. And we have a methyl group at position 3. So 3 methyl butanol. Okay. Co couple of other ones. H, C, double bond O, H. This is called methanol. Okay. The common name for this is formaldehyde. Okay, so 
similarly we have CH3 CHO this is ethanol the common name is acetaldehyde okay let's also take a structure like benzene so it has a cyclic hydrocarbon all are double bonds we represent that with a circle and then we have C double bond O H so this is again an aldehyde what this one is this is benzyl dehyde okay that's the common name all right now let's look at some examples of ketones okay so ketones have alkyl groups on both sides so this one how we number this is one two three so this is Prop and on. Prop and on. The common name for this one is acetone. Okay. The next example. We number this so that this gets the lowest number. So one, two, three, four. If we had numbered this way, one, two, three, which would have been greater than two. So this is the correct form of numbering. Now there are four carbon atoms. So this is butane. We don't write the E. We write butane non. But we also need to specify the position. So you could specify it 2 ohm, but we bring the 2 in the front. So it's 2 butanol. Okay, next example. Okay, this, this, this. The ketone group is here. Let's say we have a double bond here and a methyl group here. Okay. okay. Remember, priority wise, ketone comes before methyl. So we have to number this side. One, two, so priority means this gets the lower number. Three, we can't number it this side. We have to have max number of unsaturated carbons on the parent chain. So we have to number it this side, okay? So just see how we are applying all the rules. Now, this one is but okay now the position of the double bond is 3 we write it in the front and the position of the ketone group is 2 we write it here on so 3 but 10 2 on but this is not all we have uh, 3 methyl in the front so 3 methyl which is this this 3 is to specify the location of the double bond but 3 but 10 and this 2 is to specify the location of the ketone group okay let's take one last example Two ketone groups here. Okay, it's symmetric, so we can number either way: one, two, three, four, five. So this is a 
pentane. Okay, pentane. Okay. Now we have dione because there are two ketone groups. So we must include the E, di, on, okay? Now we also need to specify the position of the ketone groups. So two comma four, pentanidiol. Okay, now we will take some examples for carboxylic acids. Let's start with simple ones, H, C, double bond O, O, H. So the name starts with meth. This is methane, methanoic acid. Okay, remember that the E is omitted here, methanoic acid. The common name for this is formic acid. Okay. Now let's increase one of the carbons here. So now we have two. So it has to be eth and ethane. Et A N. We omit the E, replace it with oic acid. So this becomes ethanoic acid. The common name for this one is acetic acid. Okay, now let's take a little bit more complex example. We have this, 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 this. We have a methyl group here and the OH group is so COOH, the carboxylic group is here, okay? Now, we always include the carbon and since carboxylic acid group or carbonyl group has more priority than an alkyl group, this has to be given number one, two, three, four, Okay, so we can see that this is pentane, so pentanoic acid. Since this occurs at position 1, we don't need to mention the position 1 here. And we have 3 methyl. 3 methyl pentanoic acid. Okay, let's take the example of benzene again. All double bonds represented like this. And then we have C O O H. This is called benzoic acid. Okay. Let's take one good example here. C O O H and then we have another C O O H. Okay. Alright. So two carbons. So we must start with eth. Now A N because this is ethane. We don't write the E, but there is two acid, right? So we say, we then write the E, ethane dioic acid. Hopefully I got the rules correctly. Ethane dioic acid. The common name for this is oxalic acid. Okay, one last example, this, 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 double bond here, and this has OH here, okay. 
the COOH group has higher priority than a double bond. So this has to be number one, two, three, and four. So four carbon atom chain in the parent chain, so it has to be but But then it is butene, E-N, I'm not writing the E. To denote the position of the double bond that goes in the front, three butene, then oic acid. So three butene oic acid. So that finishes all the examples for the carbonyl groups. We have two more functional groups to talk about and then we should be able to close this lesson. The next functional group is ester. Okay. How do esters look? R, C, double bond O, O, R dash. So it has two parts. So alkyl group R, C, double bond O, and the other side we have another alkyl group. Very similar to ethers but instead of having just an alkyl group here we have a C double bond O in between okay how this is named is simple so this side is the alkyl group and this side this is called the acyl group okay so the alkyl group is first named and it's named as a substituent ending in YL. Okay, this will be followed by a space by a space and then we go to the acyl group. Okay. How we name the acyl group is pretty simple. We replace the ic acid suffix of the corresponding carboxylic acid with a t Let's take an example and this will become clear. So let's say we have CH3, CH2, C double bond O, O, CH3. Okay. Can you see that this part is the acyl group and this part is the alkyl group. So we start with the alkyl group first. So we will say this is methyl and corresponding acid of this one is, so this is three carbons, so this was propanoic acid, we will have to have a space here, we will write propano, we will replace ic acid with noate. So this is methyl propanoate. Okay. The last functional group that we'll discuss today is called amines. I don't remember this is number five or six. Anyways, amines. So amines are actually it looks like this. Okay, we have a NH in between. We'll only look at the common names for amines and these are named like ethers. So remember what we used to do was the alkyl groups that are attached to either side of nitrogen we name them and we put them in the alphabetical order and we end it with the word amines. Okay. Let's 
take an example CH3 NH CH3 this will be dimethyl amine okay let's take another example CH3 CH2 NH CH3 this will be ethyl methyl amine no space how these are named are um, alkyl groups named in alphabetical order followed by amine okay so those are all the functional groups we discussed today do revise this lesson in detail look at it multiple times because there are a lot of rules that we talked about and in some future lessons we will go over some more examples because more and more you solve examples for IOPAC nomenclature uh, more it becomes clearer but this should be a good start leave some comments and let us know if you have any specific questions you are stuck anywhere if you have any doubts on any of the rules do let us know in the comments and I will definitely get back to you and answer your questions with that that's all for today. Thank you.